Welcome back. This is Morning Express. Today we're focusing on your health and COVID-19. What should you do or incorporate into your nutrition to ensure that you are healthy, even if you haven't posted, uh, uh, you haven't tested positive for COVID-19, and after you have tasted uh, positive for COVID-19, and as we go down the line of those symptoms from mild to severe, what sort of tweaking should you make to your nutrition to ensure that you are gay, uh, strong enough to fight coronavirus? Now, joining me for that particular conversation to give us insights on what we can do to ensure we are remaining healthy as we fight this is Agnes Wando, who is a nutritionist and dietitian. Welcome to the show this morning, Agnes. Thank you for having me. Right. Now, Agnes, uh, coronavirus, the biggest thing with this is that we don't know what to, 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 the, the, what to cure it. There's no vaccine, there's no cure, there's nothing that you can use to ensure that you are remaining um, uh, safe and of course that you can buy at a store and take and you will be good. So the best defense we have right now is our diet. So tell us about, um, uh, let's start with people who have tested positive. You go down there, you start, there's, a, there's a spectrum from mild to quite severe symptoms and let's start with the usual illness illnesses that would have a runny nose, fever, cough, headache, or maybe just a sore throat. This type of person at this level, what should they be adding to their diet to ensure that they are healthy? So uh, we find that anytime you test positive and you have these mild symptoms such as cough and fever, sometimes you, your energy levels go down, uh -huh. especially if you have fever. So we always recommend, as much the other concussions that I'm going to talk about, mm. we recommend energy-giving foods such as carbohydrates. Oh. Whenever you're down with a fever and uh, you find your energy levels tend to go down completely. Okay. So I always recommend to eat a bit of carbohydrates that are going to help you eat, giving out energy. And I refer to the complex carbohydrates that is from the whole grains, okay? Mm. Mm. So in case you're having also the coughs and the other concussions that can really help in boosting your immune system, such as taking ginger, smashing, I mean garlic, I mean ginger, sorry. Mm -hmm. You smash the ginger, you can add a bit of lemon and hot water. It will really, it aids up in clearing of your nose string and also in terms of uh, just boosting your immune system with the, if you have the headache, the fever, it's going to help you at least activate new cells regeneration and that way you'll be able to boost your immune system. Right. Now, when you listen to the, the narratives from those who have suffered these mild symptoms, you hear of them talking about uh, those sweats at night. And, of course, for fever and running noses, you lose a lot of uh, water from your body. So tell us yes. about how someone can counter that. So you find that whenever you're feeling the dizziness or the headaches or too much fever and some people sweat a lot, mm. sometimes you, you, you can get dehydrated also. So I always recommend that at least drink a lot of water. Water helps in balancing of the pH in the body. Uh -huh. And whenever you're taking this... Um, concussions or even citrus fruits those are lemons oranges they're very very rich in vitamin c mm -hmm. which is going to really help you in boosting of your immune system because you already have the coronavirus and it cannot be we don't we don't produce enough of vitamin c in the body yes. we require to eat a proper diet that will help us in getting enough of vitamin C. Mm -hmm. So vitamin C, we can get them from the citrus fruits, such as grapes. Uh, we can get it from oranges. We can get it from kiwi, pineapple. They're very high in vitamin C. And whenever you take every day, it's going to help you in reducing of that fever and also to boost a uh, new regeneration of cells in the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, far yeah. from that, let's talk about uh, what specifically vitamin C does in the body that ensures that you are able, because even when you have the, the, the flu, just the common flu or a cold, you are told, make sure you have incorporated vitamin C, either store-bought or taking those citrus fruits that you are talking about. What specifically does it do for one's body so that the people watching at home can understand why this is important? So vitamin C helps in um, boosting of our immune system and it's very high in antioxidant. We have something called uh, the antioxidant in vitamin C. It's like um, a protective things from the body. Ah. So for instance, let's talk of just an example of skin. You find that we are exposed to so much chemicals in the air, the toxins like 
the ozone is already damaged due yeah. to a lot of uh, smokes from factories and that. So you have vitamin C that acts like a protective layer to prevent your skin from getting damaged or getting sunburns. Mm -hmm. The same thing, the antibody in vitamin C can aid in our body to protect us from getting free radicals from the air that we uh, inhale so that it protects us from getting cancer and also boosting of our immune system mm -hmm. because it's going to aid in protecting us from getting the free radicals one way or another the aid in uh, regeneration of new cells and boosting our immune system so this vitamin c it's very very essential in every diet that we have because without vitamin c we're not going to be able to boost our immune system to fight any infections that come be it cough be it dizziness be it fever it's really going to help us in boosting our immune system Right. And then when you go down the line of that spectrum, there's the more mild, the, the mild symptoms where you have a mild pneumonia that will be characterized by breathing difficulties and inflammation of the lungs. What sort of foods can help counter that? So whenever you have... Um start experiencing the breathing uh, problems, that now it means that your corona is now uh, growing, okay, mm -hmm. to a uh, more advanced. So the acute pneumonia, that's when people start having breathing problems. Still, you are required to at least eat vitamin A. Vitamin A also helps in boosting of the immune system. Okay. We also have uh, other uh, nutritionists can start now giving you supplements and you require some of the foods that are going to help with regeneration of new cells mm -hmm. such as meats meats are high in protein or also your gut has prebiotics and this prebiotic also helps in boosting of the immune system so we can get the natural yogurt not the ones that are ferment i mean the the ones that have sweeteners we recommend the new i mean the natural yogurt in order to boost your immune system uh, are you so talking whenever about you mala? Have Yes, yes, mm. yes. Mala is very good, actually. We're talking of mala or natural yogurt. Yes, because yes, of yes. the probiotic in it, mm -hmm. you find that it's going to really help you in boosting of your immune system. Not only that, but help with your gut and giving you the good bacteria, but it's also going to help you in boosting of your immune system. Right. So we require those and also meats mm -hmm. and uh, protein help with regeneration of new cells in the body. Such proteins like yogurt, as mentioned, we also can eat a bit of uh, protein. You can either incorporate legumes or uh, plant-based or animal-based protein in order to help you with uh, regeneration of new cells. Having enough sleep, sometimes people lack, um, because you don't sleep well, mm -hmm. you find that new cells don't uh, regenerate whenever you go to sleep you whenever you're sleeping your body is resting as much as it's resting new cells are regenerating and that's when you'll be able to boost your immune system so you required also to have enough rest mm -hmm. sleep at least for eight hours uh, at night and that way you'll be able to develop new cells that will help you in fighting of this coronavirus. Right. Now, let's switch over back to the probiotics. There are certain foods and there are certain ways of cooking that could ensure that uh, we have probiotics. So, for example, when we would add uh, some milk to vegetables, do you think this is something? Because I want this to be in a way that uh, we can access these things uh, quite locally and easily. Uh, you can understand easily how you can get, uh, incorporate probiotics into your um, diet from wherever you're, you're watching for our viewers. So tell us about the basic things that we can afford from home or some of the practices that we used to do back in the day that we might have forgotten given modern life that could actually ensure that our foods have those probiotics. So you mentioned something to do with cooking food with milk. Mm -hmm. So for instance, um, the African traditional way where parents are normally cooking uh, traditional veggies, for yes. instance, the terere, the kunde, and you find that most these people used to put milk. So that is so wrong, which mm -hmm. I know most traditional parents advocate for putting or putting the milk in the vegetables. That is so wrong. Okay. So in that vegetable, for instance, the the terere or the spinach or any uh, traditional vegetables, there is iron. Uh -huh. We also require iron in boosting of our immune system, which I'll just talk about the importance of iron. So whenever you incorporate milk, milk has calcium. 
Anytime you bring milk and mix it with iron, it's going to inhibit the process in which our iron is absorbed in the body. Right. So never try and mix vegetables with milk. Mm -hmm. But you can always try the traditional uh, ways in which you can ferment your milk at home to get yogurt. They're very good in prebiotics. Also uh, vegetables, these are traditional vegetables, the terere, the kunde, they have a little bit of prebiotics, which whenever you add um, your, your traditional what is it called? The, um, the, the, the mixture, the way they make it to make the meals look softer, where yeah, they, yeah. they like dry the beans. I don't know the, the English leaf. word. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I'm also looking for the English word. Yeah. They dry the beans and mm -hmm. have that to soften. That also helps in giving good prebiotics in the body. Right. So never try mixing a meal. For instance, if you're cooking your vegetables and then mixing it with milk. Uh -huh. That way it will inhibit the iron absorption in the body. And we need this iron to help us in uh, fighting, of, uh, antibi fighting of infections. And it's also help in, um, iron is a supplement that uh, helps in mm -hmm. pushing of oxygen every part of the body. So well, what if I'm having when... that, uh, if I'm doing that traditional practice of adding milk, but at the same time, not consistently taking that, but then taking other foods that could uh, have iron so that there's a balance. I might be getting probiotics by cooking my food in this way, but in the, uh, in, on the other hand, I'm getting my iron uh, met by taking other foods. Would that make sense? Yeah, yeah, sure, mm -hmm. sure, sure. That will still make sense. So if you can mix it, you, you, after you've done that, you know that you're not getting iron from, from this, this food. Yes. Then, mm -hmm. yes, that way you can get your prebiotic. But then now you need to get another form of iron. Yeah. And this iron, we don't only get it from the green leafy vegetables. We can get it from the meats. We can get it from the eggs. We can get it from the poultry. They're also good sources of iron mm -hmm. in the body. And sesame yes. seeds? Sesame seeds are very, very good with omega-3, uh -huh. and omega-3 is going to help us in boosting of our immune system. Okay. So we get this okay. omega-3 from sesame seeds, as, as sunflower seeds, also the oils that you use, avocado, they're mm -hmm. also high in omega-3, which is also going to help us in boosting of our immune system. So you can incorporate, and I don't mean that you take your sesame seeds the way people do it and put sugar to make a yeah, seam Yes. Yes. No, we require this dry the way it is. You can just fry your sesame seeds dryly, mm -hmm. and then you can ingest that in order to get your omega-3. When you mix it with so much sugar, we're trying to avoid a simple carbohydrates that have no uh, balance in the body. When you eat simple carbohydrates such as sugars, they're easily digested and converted to fats, and they don't, they don't give you that nutrition okay. benefit. And during this corona, we're trying to get all the essential foods that are going to help us in boosting of our immune system. Right. And a lot of the times we have a problem with the blood. Sometimes we get a lot of blood clotting. So to ensure that they, you, you're healthy as far as your blood goes, what are those foods? Uh, you mentioned iron. What other foods can we incorporate in our diets to ensure that we are healthy on that side? Because that is even where the war is taking place with the, the blood, the white blood cells, etc. So we have vitamin K. As I said, some of these uh, vitamins our body does not produce, like vitamin C, vitamin K, the body does not produce in adequate amount. So we require foods that are going to help us in boosting of our immune system. Mm -hmm. So some of the foods that we can add in helping us boost our immune system, I've said we can add eggs. Uh -huh. Again, we, we, we are going to monitor the amount of eggs, that we don't eat so much eggs as well because the yolk has a bit of cholesterol. We can take at least three eggs in a week. Yes. Then we can include a bit of meats, that is the poultry, the, uh, and also red meat is also high in uric acid, which can affect our kidneys. And we some of the symptoms after uh, with corona is people get kidney failure. Mm -hmm. So we don't want a lot of uric acid. So at least lean meat once or twice a week, that's okay. Then we can have the poultry, that is the chicken, chicken and skinned chicken, because the skin part has so much cholesterol okay. and it's also going to affect the blood clot and breathing problems. So we remove the skin of the chicken and we can always grill these foods. That way you can get all the essential nutrients that you require. Or if you have to karanga or fry them, just use a teaspoon of oil, which is going to go a long way in giving you omega-3 that is also help in boosting of our immune system. Absolutely. So some of the fats... Yes. So some of the fats that we try and avoid is um, those saturated fats, such as uh, hydrogenated kimbo. Mm -hmm. Those fats, they have so much, a bit of cholesterol, which we're trying to help you in 
uh, blood flow and avoiding blood clots. So we're trying to get uh, monosaturated fats that we get from the sunflower oil, we get them from the canola oil, we get them from the eliantok oil, those fats that have not gone the hydrogenation process. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yes. And um, uh, when uh, we're talking about the fight, how the body fights off a virus, the liver is actually quite important. And be, th that, that means, obviously, that you need to strengthen it. So what sort of foods uh, should you eat to ensure that your liver health is at its optimum? So, uh, yes, liver does a very good function in our body. You find that also breathing in or fresh, it goes and gets purified in, every, in our liver. So we're going to bring eat a lot of apples. Apples are very good in detoxifying our liver. Uh -huh. So we can include a bit of apples. Citrus foods as well, they are always good in detoxifying the body and also detoxifying our liver because if we are having to uh, go every day's life and you find a lot of people are taking so much alcohol uh -huh. which also damages the liver mm -hmm. and eating uh, foods that are very very high in fats and cholesterol also you find that you have fatty uh, fatty liver diseases where too much fats is stored and that's when people start developing cholesterol problems mm. so we're going to do a bit of exercises as well to help you in clearing of the fats around the liver when you exercise every part of the body it's going to shed a bit of the fats. And also, people don't know this, but exercising is also a way in boosting of your immune system. Uh -huh. Whenever you exercise at least 15 to 30 minutes a day, you're going to really help in boosting of your immune system and to fight more infections in the body. So you exercise, eat citrus foods, apples, they're very good to detoxify. Green tea is also good in uh, detoxifying your liver. Right. And this way, you'll have a general health. Wonderful. Now, when, when, now that you brought up the matter of health, um, of, of, of uh, the healthy benefits of exercising, let's dig deeper into that because sometimes people might go overboard yeah, or give because of their age or their weight range. So um, could you tell us about how someone can approach it if they haven't been exercising or, because, or if they just started because they were told now you have coronavirus? So how should they approach the whole concept of exercising to ensure they are healthier? Yeah, so you find that sometimes you're very, very heavy, mm -hmm. like you weigh more than 100 or you're just starting, okay? So always try and start small. Don't push yourself because sometimes if you push yourself so much, other people start feeling dizzy, headaches. Mm -hmm. They can easily faint because of low sugar levels. So try small, like just walk around the house or around the compound. You can do a 15 minutes walk, day one. And then day two, you can now start incorporating, if you can jog around, skipping ropes, swimming. Those are some of the exercises that you can do from home. Not forgetting that now, whenever you get now the strength, you need cardio the ones that will help you now start burning the fats. Mm -hmm. So you can start doing the cardio exercises at home. And I've seen nowadays YouTube has very many uh, channels in which you can watch on doing cardio with the trainer from your comfort of your home if you don't have a personal trainer. And that way it will be able to boost your impulse, not only that, but also help you in boosting of your immune system. Right, right. And when we, you've brought up um, the issue of uh, blood sugar, and it has been uh, noted by experts across the world that uh, COVID-19 could actually uh, worsen or even cause diabetes in some rare incidences, or if you have diabetes, it could make it worse. So when it comes to the issue of blood sugar, how should, what should we watch out to ensure that we are not uh, messing ourselves up through what we are taking in uh, into our body? Yeah, so we find that uh, those people who have uh, pre-existing diabetes, the other group of people that are already prone to coronavirus, that mm -hmm. is the elderly, the people with diabetics. So in the diabetic people, you find that their insulin levels tend to drop so much, where your sugar levels they tend to drop. So there are foods that can really help you in boosting of your immune system. But you find that most people are drinking so much simple sugars, such as the sugar that you put in your tea, you can put like five, six teaspoons in your tea. Mm. That is simple sugars and they're easily digested and converted into fats. Whenever you have diabetes, we now re I re recommend that you eat foods that are going to help you with uh, balancing the insulin level in the body. That is like the complex carbohydrates that are also going to help you not only control your sugar levels, but also give you that fiber that will help you in controlling your blood sugar levels. Mm -hmm. So there are certain foods that help in controlling blood sugar levels, such as fiber, 
right. fiber, we can get it from the vegetables, the fruits, and also the complex carbohydrates. They're mm -hmm. very high in fiber. Also, we're going complex to... Complex carbohydrates treating... means basically like a maize flour when you're making ugali, right? The, yes, the whole grain. Now, yes. when that the maize flour, the one that's the grade one, mm -hmm. you see the grade one that is not uh, removed, the not corn, too refined. the one that has all... Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so the, because it's already refined, you find that you're not getting all the nutrients mm -hmm. and you require the complex carbohydrates such as the multigrain bread or the brown chapati. Uh -huh. Those are complex carbohydrates. They have so much fiber. They take a lot of time to be digested. So that means you, you won't be eating all the time, all the time. And mm -hmm. it gives you very high satiety. Mm -hmm. And not only that, they're going to help you in controlling your blood sugar levels. Mm -hmm. So right. those are some of the foods that can help you in controlling blood sugar levels. Mm -hmm. Also, you can inc incorporate a bit of um, the protein, the green tea, very good in controlling blood sugar levels. The yes. ginger, the garlic, they're very good anti-inflammatory. And also they help in controlling sugar levels. So you can mash in your garlic and add a bit of turmeric. Turmeric is very good anti-inflammatory. Yes. It prevents you from getting knee problem. Whenever you find that anytime with person with diabetic, they can start having developing the sugar levels and start developing knee problems. So mm -hmm. anti-inflammatory such as turmeric, you just take in fresh turmeric, smash it, put it in your green tea, add a bit of uh, citrus food, and that way it's going to help you in controlling your blood sugar levels and boosting your immunity as well. All right, so you've talked about inflammation. There are things that actually exacerbate inflammation and we, our, the tea that we love and coffee. What should we avoid to ensure that we're not making it worse? If, because inflammation is also a big concern with coronavirus. Yes, that's very true. So there, there are those people who have um, the osteoporosis that is the problem with your knee and uh, poor development of your joints mm -hmm. and we require that you take a bit of calcium that helps in uh, rectifying that so there are certain foods that whenever you're eating them and you find that uh, during this time we're trying to help you get um, the anti-inflammatory properties that is from the turmeric so if you're taking if you have uh, for instance you're trying to take your calcium and uh, you take, for instance, too much of caffeine in the body, it's also going to inhibit the process in which that calcium is stored. So, mm -hmm. for instance, you're making your tea, you can just put in a bit of tea leaves, that is okay. Mm -hmm. But anytime you have the osteoporosis problem and you're drinking too much of the coffee, it uh, sometimes can lead to a bit of inflammation. So we always recommend to drink these uh, drinks in moderation, not drinking so much of the the coffee and anytime you experience the inflammation always supplement with calcium but first talk to your nutritionist or your health provider mm -hmm. will uh, give you the supplements that are going to help you so we have the calcium supplements that are uh, always help with anytime you have the inflammation or the knee problem it's also going to aid in mm. that as well yeah now let's move along to the more advanced stages of the uh, COVID-19 infection where you have severe pneumonia acute uh, mm -hmm. uh, respiratory res res respiratory distress syndrome septic shock yeah. and kidney failure also um, uh, what can you uh, t tell us about what Probably at this level, the diet is being handled by a healthcare giver. So what could you say yeah. about um, this and how, how are these patients being taken care of in terms of their dietary needs? So you find that uh, whenever you, you, your COVID-19 progress to more advanced or the chronic ones, such as um, the kidney failure and mm. also the um, now the chronic pneumonia you find that these people in the hospital are going to eat either through the enteral feeding or the parental feeding okay. that is either they're eating through the nose or mm -hmm. through the veins and you find that they monitor their portion and uh, they give them in liquid form so for instance you now maybe let's say you've been released home and uh, you're going home and you have this kidney failure mm -hmm. there are certain foods that can really trigger the progress in which your kidney can respond. So we always recommend not to have foods that are high in uric acid or purines. Those are foods that can take, they can damage your kidney. And these are such as meats. Meats are very high in uric acid. So we find that any person who has kidney failure and they go through dialysis, there are portions that we measure when um, ensuring when you go back home and you're trying to eat these foods. So avoid too much red meats. 
also foods that are high in purines, such as the legumes, such mm -hmm. as beans, pulses, we're going to modify these uh, types of portions. So you are not recommended to eat meats every day. If you've gone through that dialysis, at least if you have two once a week, but you can also get your sources of protein from the chicken, mm -hmm. which has low uric acid, and the fish. Fish are very good with omega-3, and also they are good sources of protein and are also very low in uric acid and the purines. So try and avoid the purine foods, the legumes, and also the, the red meat because the, of the uric acid. Whenever you start, you've been released to go home and you're advised to now be on a proper diet. But okay. always a nutritionist will guide you on the portions of these foods. They will create a daily recommended chart for you where okay. you have the foods that you require to eat whenever you go home in order to uh, give you the energy that you require. Mm -hmm. Now, last yeah. and but not least, tell us about, uh, bri just briefly, could you touch on superfoods that one can take in to ensure that this also helps them be healthier? Yes, superfoods. So we have the foods that can help you in quick boosting of your immune system. Yes. As I mentioned, the natural yogurt. Mm -hmm. Natural yogurt Ginger, ginger, very good in uh, boosting of your immune system. Citrus fruits, that is the oranges, the, um, the grape, the kiwi, very good in boosting. Garlic, you can always smash garlic and put in your food. It's very good with antioxidants and also it's going to help you in boosting of your immune system. Mm -hmm. Green tea, very good in boosting of your immune system. So those are just superfoods that you can green leafy vegetables, not forgetting the green leafy vegetables, that is the spinach, the broccoli, the skumawiki, very, very good in boosting of your immune system. Your diet should always consist of the seven foods that I've mentioned, mm. and that way they are super foods, they're easily accessible, you can get them in the markets anywhere, you look in the supermarkets, in your local markets, you can never miss the citrus foods, you can ne never miss like the garlic, the ginger, and you can always make a water uh -huh. where you put your garlic, I mean, sorry, the lemon, you can put the lemon, you can put a bit of uh, uh, the lemon, and then you can put a bit of water, you can mm -hmm. put also chia seeds, and you can put the ginger and uh -huh. that way to be able to help you in boosting of your immune system okay thank you very much agnes for your time and if you did not